What is up everybody, welcome back. I wanna take things in kind of a different direction today and talk about this election, this presidential election that's just gotten underway in the United States this week. For some reason, I've gotten really into politics lately. I've been listening to podcasts, looking at polls, looking at predictions from all over the internet. And there's this question about whether any of those things actually matter or if, if what it seems like is true, if Donald Trump is just going to be the inevitable Republican nominee this year, given the landslide he seems to be winning by in almost all of these podcasts, polls, and predictions. A quick refresher of where we're at for people who are not following us closely. Over the next couple months, all the states in the United States will hold what's called a Republican primary, where they're going to vote for which Republican candidate they want to be their nominee come November to face very likely Joe Biden in the presidential election. The first of these states, Iowa, has already had their say last week, and the second of these states, New Hampshire, is going to have their say tomorrow. Now these two states, Iowa and New Hampshire, are very important not just because they're first, but because of what being first entails and also because of the general demographics of the voter base in these states. The first of these, to get a sense of what being first to vote entails, to get a sense of that, look at what happened to the predicted polls of Donald Trump on the day of the Iowa caucus last week where he won by an absolute landslide against his opponents. There's quite a substantial, tangible, sizable bump in the polls for Donald Trump. The other reason that these two states, Iowa and New Hampshire, are so important is because they generally represent these two different core samples of the Republican Party. In Iowa, you have a lot of evangelical, faith-based Republican voters, and in New Hampshire, you have a lot of more moderate, college-educated, less primarily faith-based Republican voters. So the logic goes that if Donald Trump is able to win by a landslide with Iowan voters and with New Hampshire voters, then is there really any state where he cannot win by a landslide? And as everything would suggest, to become the inevitable Republican nominee. In this video, what I wanted to do was take an interesting different take on predicting what's going to happen in New Hampshire tomorrow. Given how much Iowa seems to have affected the polls in New Hampshire, as we just saw, what if we could use historical election data? So go back eight years to 2016, the last time there was a competitive Republican primary race, and take a look at which counties in Iowa, so there's 99 counties in Iowa and each one votes, which of the counties in Iowa from 2016 voted the most similarly, had the most similar voting distribution to the entire state of New Hampshire in 2016. If we can identify those top, let's say, five counties, we can use that you can use the votes of those five counties from last week for this new set of Republican candidates. We can make a prediction of what's going to happen in New Hampshire tomorrow. And so the method is pretty simple and it goes like this. We're going to take a look at, going back to 2016, the way that each of these 99 counties in Iowa voted. We're going to look at their voting distribution for the set of candidates at the time. Now each of those is going to be a distribution. We have 99 such distributions. Now we're going to look at the same distribution for the same candidates back in 2016 for the entire state of New Hampshire. What we're going to do is compare each of these 99 distributions for each county in Iowa to the overall distribution for New Hampshire and use a measure of distance between distributions, the most popular one, the KL divergence, which I have a video for linked in the description by the way, and that's going to tell us which of these five counties in Iowa has the most similar distribution of votes to the entire distribution of New Hampshire eight years ago. Now there's a small but important wrinkle here, which is that if you've noticed, in each of these counties you might have a couple hundred voters, but in the entire state of New Hampshire you have on the order of hundreds of thousands of voters. So it seems kind of weird to compare KL divergences where one distribution is on the hundreds and the other distribution is in the hundreds of thousands. And so what we're going to do is appeal to our old friend in stats, the Monte Carlo simulations. And instead of just drawing one KL divergence for each pair of county and New Hampshire, we're going to draw an entire distribution of KL divergences. Try to wrap your head around that for a second. We're creating an entire distribution around a statistic where each of these statistics is itself measuring the distance between two distributions. But basically we're doing this to get around the problem of very small sample sizes in counties relative to very big sample sizes that are in the entire state of New Hampshire. And the way we basically do it is by sampling with replacement for each of these counties all of the votes that they got in 2016. And what we do then is look at the top five counties in Iowa who have confidently low KL divergences, who have a KL divergence that is 
much lower across all simulations than the KL divergences of other counties, which are higher. And what we get are these five counties listed over here. And now the method proceeds very simply. The idea is these are the five counties that have historically shown to vote most similar to the way New Hampshire votes. And what we're going to do now is look at the breakdown of how these five counties voted last week. And we're going to average the breakdown of their votes by candidate. And what we get is this prediction for how New Hampshire is going to vote tomorrow. So, is this correct? Absolutely not. This is very, very different from what the polls are predicting. And there's a lot of good reasons why. I'm sure many of you have already started poking holes in these arguments. Um, there's so many of them, just to name some of the big ones, where assuming that Iowa voters are perfectly going to predict us New Hampshire voters, absolutely not true. We're assuming that things that were true eight years ago, trends from eight years ago translate to now. That's absolutely not true. The political climate has changed like a lot. We also assume things I didn't even mention, like Vivek Ramaswamy, who was in the Iowa race but dropped out. We assume that all the votes that he got were allocated equally to the other three candidates who are still in the race. That is absolutely not true. There's strong arguments for why his votes would primarily go to Trump voters or DeSantis voters and probably not Haley voters. So there's all sorts of flaws in this argument. But, but. The interesting thing that this prediction that we made, this probably very bad faulty prediction that we made, and the more professional predictions that are being made out there is that Donald Trump still wins by a crazy big margin, whether you're looking at our very faulty poll or if you're looking at the more professional polls out there. So does this all guarantee the inevitability of Donald Trump? Well, it sure seems that way, but if you look back at presidential politics over the course of American history, there have been upsets so who's to say we won't see another one this time? Anyway, this video is more just an interesting statistical political exercise on if we can make predictions about what's going to happen in subsequent states based on what happened in previous states. Because we have this very interesting structure where not all the states vote on the same day. I think that would actually change the distribution of votes quite a lot. Because we have this kind of sequential voting method where some states get to have their say, people in subsequent states can take a look at that and say, wow, this candidate's doing really well, or this candidate's doing really poorly, and I can adjust my own decision accordingly, that creates a very interesting incentive structure. So if you want to see more statistical political videos, I'm certainly interested in making them. Let me know if you're interested in seeing them. But thanks for sticking around. Have a great rest of your day. If these predictions we made do pan out to be correct, I will take the credit. But again, they're likely not going to be correct. Um, thanks for sticking around. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks for watching, like, and subscribe, and I'll see all you wonderful people next time.